Hey everyone, this is Darren Eastman here and Gina Noel. Welcome to the Runner 15 to 4, um, Runner Group 15 to 4 kickoff video. I'll start first with Gina and uh, oh, she should pass it over to Gina and she'll start um, giving us a quick overview of what's happening in Runner Fleet in 15 4. Thanks, Darren. All right, I'll start sharing my screen. And as um, a reminder, just as a reminder of what Runner Fleet does, our vision is to be able to provide one view where you can configure, manage, um, and use some type of monitoring and predictive analytics to administer your fleet of runners. And you probably already know if you watch these, we do a lot of work in both the admin and group views right now regarding this. So that's what our 15.4 plan really focuses on. Um, so in regards to features that we'll be working on this milestone, we're going to be finishing up bulk delete, which is really exciting. We've heard that having more bulk management features in this area would really help uh, people, especially those with large fleets of runners. So there are two issues here that we're taking on where you'll be able to select multiple runners to delete um, in the admin view first. And just a distinction between this one and the next one here of deleting a page of runners. So this, this separate issue will allow you to select all runners that are in a page and then delete them at once. Um, these two are only two issues that we have in multiple iterations that are in this larger bulk delete epic. So if you're interested in seeing what we have coming up of how we're gonna add on to this, you're welcome to take a look at that. We were always, always looking for feedback. Some other issues that we're taking on this milestone is in the group view. And we're really excited to also improve and focus on the group runners view. So we're bringing that kind of more up to speed with what we've been doing in the admin view. We're using a refresh look and feel that we've already used in the admin view so that they are more consistent. And then another big one that we've heard from customers is that when you're looking at group runners, you don't see all of the runners that are available to you. If you're in a project, you can see that because you can see all the shared runners, group runners, and project runners that you can use. So this issue is to be able to see all of those that are available to you so that you know exactly which runners you can use. Um, and then for the UX type of stuff that we're gonna be working on this milestone, we're carrying over the category maturity scorecard and we will be continuing to run the sessions um, this milestone and we'll have this completed by then. So we will officially have a maturity score, which we're very excited about. And then lastly, we're also going to be adding a design for the stale runner cleanup setting that we added. Um, we added this recently for a group and there is no like setting to be able to toggle this on and off. So we want to just be able to add that in so that you have more customiz customization over when you want this on or off. And that is pretty much it. I'll, I'll hand it back over to Darren. Hey, thanks, you. I'm gonna find a toggle button there for a second. So I'm going to cover the other two runner group categories, first starting with runner core. Let me just kind of expand my screen here for a bit and zoom in, hopefully this is legible. Um, so thanks to the prompt, Gina, this is the direction page for runner core. And just as a quick reminder again, runner core is sort of the little engine that makes all of this stuff works. Um, so you can read our vision here on the, the vision page, just summarize, we kind of, I kind of think of this as being split brain, like half of our brain is thinking about what does the future look like for our build agent? How can we improve it? How can we make things more automated? How can we um, get to a zero friction state? So at the end of the day, um, we still need to provide a compute host in order to execute these CI jobs. And there's so many different options, obviously, in terms of what today, in terms of what those compute host, that compute host could be, right? It could be a virtual machine. It could be a a container, it could be a container managed by Kubernetes, it could be a firecracker type virtual machine. But at the end of the day, that, that, that atomic concept of a CI job needs to run somewhere. And so part of our brain is thinking how to improve what we have in that whole runner engine 
so that we can make life as simple as possible for our users that have to self-manage runners. I mean, obviously for GitLab SAS, we aspire, and we'll talk about the direction. We aspire to provide everything you need with, so that you don't have to do it on GitLab SAS, but significant percentage of our user community and our customer community. And even for some customers in GitLab SAS, they have to install and manage their own runners for various reasons. And so we're thinking about what does that landscape look like in the future? So you go to our direction page, that's what that's talking about. Um, so half of our brain and half of our, our conversations are about that future and improvements we can make and, and thinking differently about that core learning experience. And then the other half, and this is where you see, by the way, when you talk about strategic priorities, you know, big ticket items in terms of things we're thinking about around architecture evolution. And then the other half of our brain is the more of the blocking and tackling the basic day to day. And this is where we, and I'll take your attention over to our iteration plan for 15.4, right? So with one on one side, we're thinking big picture, what can we do to improve things? And then in the day to day, we've just got to keep the current engine working as efficiently as possible. So in 15.4, we're doing a bunch of works, continuing our focus on our bug burn down. Um, we still have um, a large backlog of um, bugs that we'd like to get through, specifically bugs marked um, severity two and priority two. We want to continue to burn those down. And so you see a lot of um, investment here in 15.4 on the bugs. And that's why I'm going to run a call. A lot of features here are bugs. Um, in terms of new features, there are um, continuous masking of mass variables. This is hot of the presses. But this looks like it's very close to being shipped in one of four. Just want to draw your attention to that. That is a significant change to the variable um, creation feature in one of core. Um, and so take a look at that. Um, if mass variables are interesting, something that you've been working, working for. Um, in terms of net new features, we are actually working on not a whole lot in terms of new capabilities in 15.4. There's some maintenance work plan in terms of keeping our helper images and base images up to date so that we have less issues with the out of sync with versions that may have CV vulnerabilities and those types of things. And then there's some dependency work. So core from some maintenance work, the one new feature capability is more than likely going to be the shipping of the continuous masking of mass variables. And then the bulk of the remaining investment is on these bugs that we have identified. We want to try at least burn through some of these set two um, bugs here on this list in 15.4. The other category um, in runner in the runner in the runner group is runner SaaS and runner SaaS. Just a quick recap: If you're on GitLab.com, we're doing the free plan, premium plan, ultimate plan. If you are using GitLab.com, by default you have take advantage of the SaaS runners that are offered on GitLab.com. And so our vision there is to provide you on GitLab.com as as much as possible as your friction highly performant, secure build experience. Um, so you can kind of take a look at our high level strategic priorities here on the direction page. Um, some of the big ticket items we're working on will be offering multiple machine or resource types for our Linux runners, specifically our Linux runners that run the CI job in a containerized or very specifically a Docker container environment. And most of the uh, our users take advantage of that. If, if you're looking at this video for the first time and our documentation doesn't seem super clear, let me just kind of uh, iterate this. If you're on GitLab SaaS, you're creating your first pipeline on GitLab SaaS for the very first time, you don't have to do anything in order for your first pipeline job to run. Our SaaS Linux and Linux are set up to automatically run any job on GitLab.com that's not tagged. So you can immediately take advantage of these SaaS runners. And what we're doing long term, and this might this feature here may actually ship in 15.3. It may bleed over to 15.4, even though I'm not talking about it on the iteration plan. We are adding additional Google Compute machine types to the catalog um, for the SaaS runners that um, are on Linux and that specifically run your jobs in a Docker container environment. But popping over to the 15.4 iteration plan for SaaS. Um, um, aside from adding additional compute times, and that work will be ongoing, um, tail end of 15.3, maybe bleed into 15.4. Specifically in 15.4, there's some other work that we need to do that's part of our long-term strategy. So what we hope to get to in 15.4 is starting some work that's related to supporting our strategy 
of moving our Linux shared runner architecture or scaling architecture to what we're calling our next runner scaling platform. And that sets the foundation for our self-managed customers that are needing to move off of our legacy auto scaling technology that's based on Docker machine. Um, so that's what these two things here are. Um, we hope to continue work on our customer executive provider plugin design and then moving into actually implementing some of the new capabilities in what we're calling fleeting, what we're calling task scaler, um, and then developing our new Google Compute plugin for doing auto scaling uh, on our Linux runners uh, on, on the on GitLab platform. So very soon, you'll just to summarize, late 15.3 or maybe early 15.4, you'll be seeing on GitLab SAS new runner resource or, or machine types being offered and available. And then in 15.4, we'll be doing building out some of the, the frameworks, if you will, uh, some of the foundations to enable us to then come out with a new next runner auto scaling capability. First on GitLab SAS internal runners, that runners that we use internally, so we can dog food that. And then later on, that same feature set, after we've hammered it at scale here on GitLab.com, will then be released to the customer and user community so you can start taking advantage of our new auto scaling technology. So that's it for 15.4. Any parting words, you know, before we hang up? Nothing. Hi, everyone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Gina. No, sorry. I said nothing. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Well, thanks again for checking out the Runner Group uh, kickoff video. We'll see you same time, same place uh, for 15.5. Cheers.